Well, I have finally spotted what I believe is Alex Mathias's place. Um, so I am making my way over there. I should be there in about five minutes. And uh, we'll see what's crack a lacking. So I've just been talking to Alex for a while on the beach and uh, he's just telling me all these kind of cool stories. It's so awesome. Um, he said he let me video him, so. All right, so I'm here with the world famous Alex Mathias. <laughs> He's going to show me some of his artifacts. What do you got here? No, this is actually a good size a spearhead. It's rock, but I don't know if this is really the original or my daughter found it on Bear Island That's when amazing. she was a kid, when she was a kid. So uh, it looks like local rock, so it might be just somebody trying to make one recent in recent years, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Then this here one, should we do it over here? This is also a, a spearhead. This is, a, do you ever hear the term a petrified wood or something? Yeah. That's what this is, you can feel it there. Really? Yeah. It's, oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, this was found on my beach right where I met you there today. Yeah. Yeah, this one, yeah. Amazing. And this one here is a broken one. A friend of mine gave it to me from I don't know I don't know Mike McIntosh, my yeah. city's husband. You know, that gave me this uh, a few years back. He found it on diamond somewhere, really? but you see the arrow, the head's broken. Yeah. And uh, this one here was also on my beach. Now we, see, I had a friend, my wife had a friend that was a jeweler who had a friend that could, uh, that could, uh, put a hole in it? Try to, it? no, try to, uh, car not carbon dated totally, but on our boat. Yeah. And he, we get the results back. This thing here was, uh, 8,000 years old. Oh my goodness. You know? And I know we don't have this kind of rock here, so yeah. our people used to trade. We had birch bark and everything made canoe, but other first nations didn't have it, so they used to trade us this type of rock to make, or maybe they, maybe this was during a battle. I don't know what was on our beach. The, Be people, Felt, the people that told you the year, did they, they didn't have any idea where it was from? No, no, they didn't, I didn't get a detail on that, but I, I'm sure it was traded or... Maybe in the battle, from here. you know. Yeah. But when you look at it, for eight thousand years old, it's made to spin as it flies, and, and nobody had that. You wouldn't think anybody had that technology to back yeah. then. Yeah, you know? it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Then this one here, I believe, was a tool for skinning. It's a, a rock. This was found on Ranger Point, just across the lake here. A friend of mine, Alex Broadbent, found this one and gave it to me. It was right near the fire pit, he says. It looks like the looks like exact fishing. exacto knife of of uh, for cutting shingles and stuff. You know, the hook, hook blades. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's what it reminds me of. But I, I'm thinking it's probably for when you start in your bee with the skin, it probably is hooked and, and just, you don't, uh, cut the, you don't cut the meat, you just cut in the hide, eh? Yeah, That's yeah. Because it, it would work good for that. Huh. And this one here, I all joke with people because my daughter's found it around here somewhere. I don't know where they found it, but I always say it's one of those petrified moose turds. <laughs> yeah. The same size as moose That's what now. I thought it was. Actually, <laughs> actually, when I tell the people that, they'll go like this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a rock? Yeah, it's a rock. Actually, a rock. Yeah. So cool. That's all I have of them. Uh, it's quite the collection. Yeah. Yeah, people were telling me to sell them. I said, no, my ancestors, they left them around here. And yeah. I'm going to continue to hang on to them. Well, thank you for showing me them. Okay, so last year, when I went to Spirit Rock, I was taught or told about the tobacco offering. Mm -hmm. And I brought some tobacco and I said a little thing, but yeah. I'm wondering if there's like a a certain way you have to do it or like a prayer or is it just... I believe uh, as long as she done it, 
means plenty means a lot okay. and whether whether it was done in the you know the English language or our language I think that would make a difference because the people uh, the spirits I also feel great when I go there and and when when I do leave I feel I even feel greater it's a, such a powerful place that I think it affects not only myself or my people. I guess I don't think it affects my people because they don't come there too often. But uh, when people come by as canoers and and they want to come back again yeah. because they get this energy and they go back to the crazy world over there. Oh, yeah. And, and it's Tierney like, said, oh, you're going to feel this and yeah. it's going to be emotional. Yeah. And I'm like, it's just a rock, whatever. And mm. when I got there, I started yeah. crying mm. and yeah. I felt so much and I was really amazed. Well, it's a powerful place. Mm. You know, it's not just, uh, to me, it's not just a rock. Cause I, uh, people from North Bay that's older than me said their grandparents used to come up to Tomami just because it was a sacred site. Yeah. And he, you know, North is a long way from here. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, it's always been there. But to me, uh, sacred sites, to me, the 4,000 square miles of the Kiminan, the Kiminan means land of ours, like the native people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people misinterpret to say our land, but when you pronounce it properly, it, you're saying land of ours. And uh, 4,000 square miles, I think everything in that 4,000 square miles and beyond, everything was sacred throughout this continent at one time, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, just that there's so little left that's not disturbed. That's why it stands out to be more sacred than any other places. Yeah, and they used to do a lot of ceremonies there, right? They yeah. still do. Yeah, we. That's, well, that's where I, I, I have my ceremony, but I have it down at uh, down the hill off this lake because a lot of old people can't walk that far. Yeah, yeah. Ash, you know, and I, and I want everybody to to be at at the ceremony, so we just have it at the at, uh, at the campsite uh, on the site we get back called gathering site because it's been happening so long now. Yeah. But right after the ceremony's over. Usually a couple of guys that's familiar with the area, PJ and other people, will take a group hiking that hadn't been through there before, so yeah. everybody gets to see the area. Oh, okay. <coughs> which, which is good. You can hike it from here. You don't have to. You don't from you have there. to do the portage. Pardon? You don't have to do the portage. You, there's a trail that goes there's up trail, to the top, right? There's trails off the portage. Okay. Yeah, there's one to your right. I did the portage from. Bob Lake. Coming this way. I didn't. I haven't. I haven't done it from this way, oh. so I don't know where the trails are. Yeah, well, it comes out at just that little beach. There's a little beach on the Bob Lake. There, just close to where we have our gathering. But when you go, when you go up from this way, you'll see a trail to your right, and uh, it's a nice trail. There's a lot of climbing. Yeah. Steep. Yeah. And you get up there, you're, you get a very good view of Bobka Lake. But the, the only sad part of it is there's not much soil, so the trees are only about this size, even though they might be 300 years old or mm -hmm. 250 years old. So they don't, they're don't not as big because there's not much soil to grow on. Right. But when you go down farther on the port ash, you hang a left, then you get into big timber, like big white pines. and mm. uh, Well, that's where the three sisters are. Yes. And uh, it takes you right, the trail will take you right to the campsite at the bar and uh, she's kind of so, Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, I believe that it's, it's all tagged now, just hiking signs before it was just ribbons, but just yeah. hiking signs now. And I think they're, it might be orangey red. Then you, you get over, where you go, you'll see it, like in a junction, it'll tell you where you are. There's no, uh, I don't think there's any signs. I think it's just ribbon from there. It'll take you right down to the campsite across from the Spirit Rock. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I basically just kind of said, you know, thanks for the safe passage mm -hmm. and, um, you know, for having beautiful trees yeah. and for the air and the water and for everything that's here. And Well, it is, yeah. That's all you got to thank. Uh, 
they were actually thanking Mother Earth for, mm -hmm. you know, I always do, is because it's her that providing everything for me. Right. And, uh, like, the water and the trees, the wood for fire, wood for building, and the rocks for certain things, like, we had to... We used to have sweats over there as well. I, I don't do it anymore because it's a lot of work. you got to cut down so much wood to yeah. do a sweat. A lot of people loved it. But yeah. I told them, I said, you know what? Well, I'll do it. I'd become a week in advance and give me a hand to cut a bunch of wood and haul the rocks over. But, right. uh, you know, they, they can't get time off work and stuff like that. Yeah. So the options are to throw the tobacco in a fire, mm -hmm. in the water, or in the air? I... That's... At the rock? No, and whenever you're doing well, like the, you know, when you pass the offering, I was seeing a different like uh, when you pass by his grandparents' rocks here. When I was a kid, I used to see my dad throw a handful of tobacco and just set the rocks and yeah. it land in the water. Yeah. And I wasn't into it at the time, so I used to ask him, well, "Why you throw tobacco there?" Like you know, and, and he, he all he said, "They have to smoke too." <laughs> but you know, I was too young for him to tell me it, it was a spiritual sight, I guess. You know? Right. So well, that's all he'd say. He'd have to smoke too. So I learned a lot from him, and I really changed my uh, my way of thinking. Uh, I was about fourteen. We were down in Hay, trapped, and left my mom and sister back at our camp here. So we we're down there, maybe a week or ten day trip. And there was an old prospector cabin there we were staying in, we were trapping that particular area. So I was about 14, and I, I thought to myself, well, I'm going to ask this guy something, because I never hear him discussion, discussing religion, you know. Mm -hmm. I never seen him go to church. I, I seen him go to church, if somebody, family dies on bear, I don't mean go to mass, just respect that family, it's, you know. So I asked him one time, I said, what, what do you believe in, like, you know, like, you know. He says, uh... Mother Earth, he says, take a look around you. Look at all the nice trees. Look at all what you give us, look, you know. In the summertime, we have berries. We, we have everything, he says, you know. And we need rocks to to set our traps because in the old days, you had to put a rock, tie a rock to your trap. So when a beaver gets caught, he goes out and it submerges him. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. uh, there, was, there was no conibear bear traps when he used to trap. So they, I understood. So I asked myself, what mom is it? God, like, you know, if you, if you believe in God. <laughs> he says, oh, he came on a first boat. That's all he told me. <laughs> you know, that's what Christianity's about over, I guess. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but he never got in detail, he never explained, you know, but I, I got the message, like, he was, it's something that he, I paid more attention to him instead of he sat down with me and said, well, you know, you know, you know, there's no such thing as God and all this stuff, you know, it's all man-made stuff, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, he didn't have to do it. I, I realized what he meant, you know, Yeah. And I was, I was happy to the way he told me things and so since then I kind of thought his way and I started believing, hey, this guy makes more sense than the Bible because it's, you know, everything is here that we need. Yeah. But he also told me at the same time, he said, you know what, she looks after us good, but we got to look after her too, you know. And if you mistreat her, she, someday she's going to fight back. Yeah. And I think that's what's happening now, because people are just take, 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 and not put not back into yeah. help Mother Earth. So now there's just all this hot weather we're having. And earthquakes, tornadoes, earthquakes, hurricanes, all, yeah. tsunamis. So she start, she's starting to fight back, and that's what's happening. Yeah. But you tell the average Joe that on the street, they, they wouldn't have a clue what you're talking about. They, they think I'm crazy. Or, yeah. <laughs> you know. No, well, I get it. Yeah. It happens, though. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Is there anything that you want well, I, you know, to, I'm, to share I'm, with I'm other just, people? I'm just happy that you made it. I'm happy you enjoyed the lands, and I'm happy you're... I know definitely you're not going to destroy anything. No. Uh, you know, it's just what I like with people that enjoy it and and just have a great time and get energized in some of the certain places you, you, you see, you know, and 
There's a lot of people, so many people from the southern part of the state, the big camps down in Halberton or even the long one, they have a schedule. Yeah. And they paddle. They got to be from point A to point B in a certain day. Yeah. I see so many people go right through Chief's Canop, who not known as Spirit Rock or not known to Hill Road. They pour the Astro and jump in their canoe and continue. But yeah. they don't have time for that. Uh, exploring a little extra or knowing what's or even knowing what's there yeah they're just on a trip and that's it but uh enjoy people that pays attention to everything and are willing to learn more about mother earth itself or the way it goes like uh, my myself i uh i use a lot of the old tactics uh i, I mean it's getting difficult now because with weather changes and so much like we used to have uh the May May in the wintertime, May May is uh, what they call uh, pillion woodpecker in, in English. We, our, our word for it is May May. When the May May flying make a noise in the wintertime, that's a sign of cold weather. I mean, mild weather coming. Mm -hmm. And it's always, it's not accurate to the day, but within a couple of days, it, it, it'll turn mild and it's yeah. like raining in the winter. Yeah, so I, I go by that yet. And I also go by the loons when the lake is still open. When loons are flying, make noise, it's going to get windy. Yeah. And that happens like in a day or two, maybe not the same day, but in a couple of days that, that does happen. So a bunch of little things I, I, uh, signs I go of by. Nature. Yeah, signs of nature. I got to ask you something when you just mentioned the loons. When I paddled up here just before I got to your place, mm -hmm. There was a big area full of seagulls and loons. Yeah. First, I thought it was those terns, the nasty mm, birds, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I realized there were loons. There were there were eighteen loons. Yeah, yeah, I count up to. I've never seen that many loons in one place one in my life. Yeah. What is what is that about? What happens? You know? they're, they're not. They don't. They don't all live, don't live on this lake. They no. come from inland lakes. A few might live here, but what happens is the trout down at the bottom, the bigger trout, oh. are scaring the herring up. Yeah. To a certain depth. The loons are going down, catching them, and scaring them up to the surface. Then the seagulls are getting them. So it's all natural. It's all They're fishing. nature. Yeah, you know. I should have put my line in there and tried to catch yeah, a trout. Is yeah, that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. crap. <laughs> I, I see it happen something. I'll troll right into where they are, and you'll always get a trout or two. Yeah. yeah. I'm not very good at fishing. No. I brought my rod, but no, I'm not very it's, down, I'm no Jim Bear, that's for they're sure. Down, they're, <laughs> no, they're down deep, though. This yeah. Time here, yeah. I yeah. put a, I have a downrigger now, so I put in a, about 40 feet down yeah. and put my lure up behind it, and that's where they are this, this time of year. So. I'm glad you noticed that. I'm glad you asked because I'm sure other people see it or maybe don't want to pay attention to it because it was a few years back, maybe three years ago, they had a group of kids come from Bear Island on a trip with some adults. So they dropped in to see me, so they wanted to get towed back to the Port Ash, and I said, okay. And uh, I had a young lad sitting in the back seat where I'm driving the boat, and, and he seen it. A lot of other kids seen it, but they didn't pay attention to him. But he, it, it caught his attention. Then he asked me, so I explained exactly what I explained to you, like the trout scaring up the herring, and yeah. loons go down, scared them up part of the surface. And I was really happy that people asked me questions. There's a lot of people want to know what's really happening and for a kid that was maybe 15 or 16 it was good to yeah at least somebody out of that crew was paying attention yeah you know so He's not uh, just worried about getting back to his yeah, internet and, and i'm not saying it just because he happened to be my great nephew you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> no I, I was proud of him like you know and, yeah well that that um last year I love loons. I love them. I love the calls. And mm -hmm. last year I looked it up online and I watched a bunch of videos and I learned what the actual calls mean. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously it's like, you know, yeah. you said the nature signs. It's not yeah. science. Like it's not right yeah. down to a pinpoint. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the haunting call means that they're looking for either their, their partner yeah. or their babies. Yeah. You know, and then the tre trelemo, tremello call. It's, you know, when they go up yeah. and down yeah. and that means they're scared mm -hmm. and they're feeling threatened. Yeah. and. So ever since I watched those videos, it took me 10 minutes one day, I speak loon, right? Mm, and yeah. so when I'm out, I hear them, or if I'm paddling near one and I hear it do the tremolo call, 
I know that it's scared and I'm panicking it and I go yeah. away from it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think things like that are so important. You're out there and you see these beautiful creatures and people take pictures of them, but they don't know what anything yeah. about them, right? Yeah. And to take 10 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, to ask you that question yeah. or to watch those videos, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, now I go out and I'm like, oh, now I... Now I know what he's saying. Now yeah, I know yeah. what, what he's what he's yeah, doing and yeah. why he's making that noise. He's mm -hmm. looking for his partner. Yeah. Last weekend when I was on Blueberry Lake, there was one loon. There were two loons the one day. And then the next day I only saw one. And he kept mm -hmm. calling and calling and calling mm -hmm. and doing the haunting yeah. call. And then all of a sudden I noticed I didn't hear it anymore. So I looked out on the lake and it was swimming around with its partner yeah. again. On Blueberry, that's the old Javogam, near Tawagam, is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Never walked on Blueberry no? Trails, you know? Yeah. So it... Uh, the old growth trail is yeah, very yeah, nice. But you know, when I when I do the trails here, I'm familiar with everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't just take people through walk walk the trails. I just don't do that. I explain things to them. That you you'll, don't you'll, know. You'll see uh, old blazes, axe marks in the portage mm -hmm. because that's the way the native people mark the trees long ago to keep the same trail. Nostalgian. Yeah, and. Uh, but the red pine, it'll it'll say the height it was put into, you know, the the, the blaze, the, yeah. the axe mark. It'll be the very same height the day they put it in. It could be a hundred years ago. Yeah. But with the white pine, the blaze grew up higher. Ah. Uh, you know, little things like that. A lot of people don't pay attention to, so I have to explain to them. So that's why a lot of people like me take them on a hike. They want to hike before they said people just show them the roads and don't know anything about the area. But when you start explaining to them, and see, takes, I didn't know that. I'm going to start looking for yeah, that on the it, portages yeah, now. It takes a little bit longer time instead of just hiking through a trail. But they're learning at the same time, and they feel better. Yeah. Like you said, it's following me through the bush, right? Yeah. So it's uh, something I I started doing, you know, like explaining more things, things to them because which they're going to miss. You know, yeah. When she when starts explaining at them, then I start reading, oh, yeah, it is true. Like, you know. Yeah. <coughs> so it works good. All right, nice. well, I've taken enough of your time, so I'll let you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for talking to well, me. I really appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm like. I hope you come back. So happy that I got to meet you. Yeah. Really. Well, I hope you make it back sometime. Uh, I'm hoping to come to the changing of the That'd seasons. That'd be good. So. Yeah. Yeah. Good people will be coming in on. Some people will be coming in like on a Wednesday or Thursday, say two till Sunday or Tuesday. Some people like. It's usually a good turnout. And we used to have a. A fish fry, a pig roll fry. And, Nice. So draws on a lot, of, draws on people. But a lot of people just going to come and learn, you know, learn something. And... Well, I'm just getting ready to leave Alex's place. Um, was here for about almost two hours, and uh, got to hear some amazing stories, um, lots of history about tomogamy, and um, it's just priceless. I'm so glad that I came here and uh, stopped to say hi and, and talk to him. Um, I got some footage uh, that I'm gonna be posting um, of him uh, talking about a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And uh, I'm gonna get going. It's 12.30 and uh, I've got, I think, maybe about two hours or so to get to, <sighs> he told me how to say it and I still can't say the stupid name of that lake. I wanna say Wakama, but it's, or Wakamika, but it's not, it's, Wakim, Wakimica, Wakimica. There you go, Alex. Wakimica. So I think I've got about two hours or so to get to Wakimica. I have to go uh, through the river and then I'll be on the lake. So shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I'm going to eat my lunch on the way and uh, looking forward to getting to my campsite and uh, checking out this spot where um, they, uh, they stayed all the... Uh, well, not all the people, but a lot of the people stayed during the uh, blockades in 1989. So, let's go. I'm really glad I left early because the wind is picking up and it is now against me. It's not that bad. It's actually making the water do these really cool patterns. Um, but it could have been a lot worse for me and a lot harder to paddle um, if I hadn't left so early. So, I'm really glad I did that. And, uh, I mean, look at all I got to do. It's 12.30. I spent almost two hours with Alex Mathias. 
um, paddled all the way from my site where my hat probably still is sitting, which I'm really upset about, but nothing I can do. And um, that's pretty awesome. So I'm just having lunch now while I'm paddling and uh, I should be getting to the Kamaka River very soon. So um, yeah, I've been saying that wrong the whole time, but that's how you learn, right? You ask questions, so. Um, Alex also told me about the loons. I asked him about the loons and why there were like 18 of them over in this big group. And he said that they come from all the other lakes because the trout are there. And um, I guess the trout push all the herring up and then the seagulls and the loons eat the herring. So that's pretty interesting. I'm amazed uh, at how much this man knows and how much information he has and I wish I could have just sat there all weekend talking to him because I would have learned so much but I will see him again soon at the changing of the seasons festival and uh, I'm really looking forward to it so I will uh, keep paddling and um, I think actually the mouth of the river entrance is right here so I'm looking forward to paddling down a river hopefully it's nice and small and serene and Maybe there's a moose.